I have always enjoyed gaming, more specifically crap gaming. My love for playing shitty games led to the eventual creation of the webcasting crap game tournament. However, the price I paid mentally and physically has taken its toll and threatened to stop the annual tournament in its tracks. When Billy trained me last year, it gave me a newfound respect for crap games, but somehow I lost my powers. Day after day, I've tried to regain my crap gaming abilities, but have been met with failure and frustration. I would drive around, looking for answers, trying to rekindle the spark that led to the flame that is the bonfire of the crap tournament, trying to find those answers, trying to find Billy, trying to find myself. I fear that if I don't find these things soon, it may be the very end of the crap tournament. Forever. 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 Oh shit. That reminds me. I have some calls to make. Dial, 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 dial. Hello, Robert. Could you please assist me with the titles this year? Thank you. I will now listen to what you have to say. Demon Eye X. Well, Demon Eye X uh, had a catchy title to it. I, sometimes when I was in the process of setting up the rules for TG, I would go down the line, and if I saw a title that had some interest value to it, I decided to check it out. And Demon IX sounded too good of a title to pass up playing at least once. And uh, I liked the nature of the game, but once I got into the game and I started to get scores that were getting close to what the Marp World record was, and then I realized why the Marp World record is so low. It's because the game sucks so much <laughs> that the enemies start disappearing on you. And uh, Sky Shooter is another one which, um, if you take the time to play this game, you'll find out that very early on, I can't remember if it's level 2 or 3, it might be as early as level 2, you can't get past the level. I don't know what they were thinking when they released this game. I was wondering why all the scores on Mark are within like 60 or 90 points of each other, and I found out why. <laughs> There's only so much you can do, huh? Yeah, it's just a matter of who squeaked out one extra hit or one extra kill, you know, depending on the, what the other players did. Mm -hmm. So it was really bragging rights, so like 10 extra points or 20 extra points beyond another player. I thought this would be an interesting title in that if everyone played their hearts out, it would probably be, in any given tournament, the closest title between the first place and the last place player. Blasto is another game which is going to be interesting because there is a finite number of points you can get on the game, mm -hmm. and it varies depending on the setup. So you don't know what you're going to get until you get comfortable with the identifying the setups, and even then, you still have to execute it to fruition. And Blasto doesn't give you many opportunities to um, make a mistake if you want to get all of the items blasted off the screen. You're going to find that most players are going to get within, I'd say, 200 points at a top score, maybe maybe 300 if they try hard. Because mm -hmm. Blasto's not too difficult that the average player can't get a decent score, but it's frustrating enough that the average player is never going to get a perfect score. Yep, it's a shooting game. Basically, animals run across the screen. It's like Triple Hunt and Blue Shark. And there's, there's a whole bunch of them like that. And what you have to try to do is just simply move your uh, cursor around and try to hit them. Going to input this game, I can see it's up, down, left, right, aim up, aim down. Yeah, it, it's a very weak game where you just have to try to hit objects going across the screen. Jump Coaster was very annoying in that you had an incredibly small area to work with and the patterns were fairly intricate for such for such a title. I gave up after a while. I just got annoyed to no end trying to figure out the patterns for this one. And uh, let's see, Captain Silver, uh, you have Never not heard of that one had any experience with that a big one. surprise to me. Yeah, that one, um, uh, I looked at TG just to make sure that nobody in this uh, contest had a uh, score up on it. Um, this, is, this is a game I definitely remember playing. 
uh, it's just not working very well for me right now. This is going to be a very annoying game. <laughs> very annoying. I know players are just going to... Well, I, I know players are just going to be pulling their hair out trying to get good at this game. It's like reverse Tetris. I don't remember playing this one, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be a surprise for me. Goldbug, I discovered when I was populating the uh, main database, is an ultra-cheesy version of Dig Dug. It's so bad, I told Donald Hayes to try it, and Donald doesn't pass up a challenge. Donald didn't even bother to get good at this game. Space Cruiser, 1981, Arteto Games. Right off the bat, I can tell you the game probably sucks. <laughs> it's really bad. I like couldn't even finish the first ship. No. I misfired right off the bat and I died. Uh, Pula Lula, which is something I played several years ago when I set an inaugural name score and I was just randomly going through titles. This title has a uh, an effect like as if you're playing a children's TV cartoon. Um, it's very simple to play, and within one to two tries, the average player should make it into round three. And what's going to happen in round three is you're going to see this, well, I won't spoil the surprise, but you're going to see something come out and say, what the hell is that? Basically, it's just jump, 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 punch, 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 and not much else. It is a unique version of Breakout. It's not unlike aspects of Circus Atari combined with Breakout. Um, there's an object that runs across the screen as a blocker, and it's actually uh, supposed to be a football blocker, just like in real football, that's the name field goal. And that's very similar to some of the um, objects that come out in Arkansas. Well, the Craft Game Tournament to me uh, is unique in, in several ways. One, it brings to life titles that nobody would normally play. Some of them challenging, some of them not, some of them horrible, some of them actually fun and entertaining, but it's a mix. And the crafting tournament, to me, also brings to light uh, a challenge, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because, again, you've got titles that are rarely played, either because they are bad or because they are just simply unknown, or maybe the game itself is okay, but the premise is just pathetic. <laughs> you know, it could be a combination of any of those. What you get out of it is a truly competitive turn because you don't have somebody that spends 30 hours a week playing one of those games to be the world champion on it necessarily. That aspect of the unknown, the unfamiliar, uh, really brings out uh, the gameplay to me and brings out a level of, of, well, actually a level playing field, really. And we're going to be completely revamping uh, what we've traditionally called the marathon page, mm -hmm. which was used for the nibbler attempts for Johnny's asteroids, uh, most famously for that. Yep. Uh, we were on, we were covered on Wired Magazine's uh, website, and uh, they linked, they even had a screenshot of how it was set up so that we had, you know, three streams where you had Johnny's face, the big room, and then did the actual stream. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be using that with uh, you, I believe. Yep, yep. I think uh, I get the center square. I'm like Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> there you go. Or, uh, uh, well, who is that? Paul Lynn, I guess, was the original center square, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yes. I'm uh, glad I'm I... I'm correct on that, but good, good for you. You know your trivia. Yep, yep. yep. I'm, I, unfortunately, that's uh, kind of my job is to know stupid shit that doesn't <laughs> do anything in real life, but <laughs> works for popping into <laughs> conversations like this, I guess. We are going to unleash the Orcade scoring system on the Craft Main Tournament. So in conjunction with having the, the tri-streaming pages where you can see, you know, a mainstream, which will be Mr. Center Square, Bill Holmes, and any other stream you wish to watch, you also have all these scores electronically handled uh, through the scoring system. So uh, while people will want to be posting in the forums and keeping up to date with what they're doing with their scores, we're going to be taking those. And Ken House and Johnny McAllister... Uh, we'll be assisting, and we'll be putting them electronically into the scoring system so people can watch live. And without having to dig through the forums, they'll be able to see right then and there, to the moment, who's winning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tease a little bit here. Uh, nothing we're going to be announcing here uh, tonight talking with you, mm -hmm. uh, but I can say that in the near future, uh, we're going to be unleashing a few new features at Orcade, and one of them 
uh, will apply directly into the craft meme tournament. As much as it is a tease, I can say uh, we'll be announcing that and several other things in conjunction with the ACAM tournament. Because we're now working with the craft meme tournament and Mr. Holmes, uh, and we're making that kind of an official uh, partnership, if you will, mm-hmm. now it's fair to say, okay, that everyone knows that Orcade's focus is the actual live scoring in the real arcades with real machines. Yeah. But we've done in the past, we did a Sega-sponsored uh, tournament at ACAM Fun Spot last year, which was Afterburner Climax on the 360 and the original Afterburner 2. Mm-hmm. And we've had a couple of occasions where we've either done consoles and, in some instances, name. And this is one of those cases where this is a tournament situation where you have an established tournament that's in year number three, working with the Crap Name Tournament uh, in certain conditions, and this is one, name scores are accepted and considered a part of the Orcade scoreboard. Under normal circumstances, we do not, Orcade does not accept, you know, IMPs like Mark would. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we leave that to Mark, that is their domain. Uh, I have no interest in repeating what they do. Uh, I think they do a very good job of that. Uh, but for really cool ideas and really cool tournaments like this, uh, we're happy to be a part. I can only hope that somehow, with all of this outpouring of support for this tournament, that I might be able to find Billy, find the answers to how we can keep this thing going. Much better.